Hi everyone, I'm Shannon with Life in Motion Gym and today we have a brief mat workout that you can do without needing any equipment from home. The only thing you need to be able to do is to get onto the floor. You can have a mat or even just a thick carpet, um, anything that's comfortable. If getting on the mat and up and down from the floor isn't easy for you, you could also do this laying in bed so you don't have to get onto the floor. The support surface is just a little bit less um, firm, so you might squish into the mattress a little bit. So we're going to start laying on our backs. And we're just going to warm up the body a little bit by rolling our knees from one side to the other. Just kind of slowly rocking from side to side in order to warm up our body for some movement. If this is comfortable for you, you can spread your arms out to the side, roll your knees to the left, and look over your right shoulder, and breathe. Bring your knees back up to the middle. We'll do the same thing to the opposite side, so knees to the right, look over your left shoulder. Only do this if this is pain-free. Nice deep breath here and bring your knees back up to middle. We're going to warm up our core by doing some uh, what we call pelvic tilts. So you're going to tighten your belly muscles and see this space here under my low back. We're going to push into it by pulling your belly muscles tight. You're going to hold it for a count of three and then relax back to neutral. So pull those belly muscles into the spine, pull the belly button down into the floor, hold, and relax. Do that again, pull those muscles tight, flatten your back into the floor, and hold. And relax. We've got two more here. You never want to hold your breath, so as you pull your belly into the floor, you want to make sure that you're still breathing and not just holding your breath to tighten those muscles. And relax. And one more here, pull in, flatten. Really push into the mat or into the floor or into the bed. And relax. Okay, so we've got our core warmed up a little bit. We're gonna move into a bridge. So you're gonna lift your hips up off the floor we're going to do lots of holds today, not a high intensity workout, but more of engaging the muscles and keeping them engaged. So we're holding here. Your knees are pointing up to the ceiling. They're not flailing out to the sides. You've got a nice straight line from your knee to your hips to your shoulder. And then we'll lower back down. Come back up again and hold. Always breathing, never holding your breath when you're holding yourself in this position. Pretending like there's a ball between your knees and you're squeezing to engage your thighs. And lower back down. We'll peel back up again. And hold. We're going to do five of these bridge holds. So again, not high intensity, but more of sustaining the movement. Try not to overarch your back here. Try to keep your hips, knees, and shoulders in a nice straight line, and lower back down. We're gonna peel back up again. This is four of five. Make sure to breathe. You don't wanna hold your breath when you're doing these exercises. Don't let those knees fall out to the side. Keep them pointing towards the ceiling and lower back down. One more here. So peel back up, back into that bridge, hold that position. Engage your hips and your glutes here. You're going to use those to keep you from falling. Those are muscles we don't use as much when we're sitting, so it's great to engage the muscles in the back of the body. Good, and lower back down. 
Bring your knees into your chest. We're just going to get a nice stretch here. You're just going to pull in. You're welcome to lift your head up too if that stretches out your back. And just stretch. And then lower your feet and your shoulders back to the mat. The next thing we're going to do here is peel our head and shoulders up up off the mat. You're going to kind of float your hands next to your heels here. We're going to engage the side of the trunk by trying to tap our ankle on either side, keeping your core engaged. So you want to pull that belly button into the spine like we did at the very first exercise, or the second. And that's going to be what holds your core in place. Keep your shoulder blades up off the mat, and we're just going side to side, tapping the ankles, so it's kind of squeezing that side body, side to side. Keep going. We're doing one long sustained hold here. Three, two, and one. Good. And slowly lower back onto the mat. Stretch your arms up over your head and stretch your legs out. Get a nice stretch in that belly. And breathe. Good. Bring your legs back in. Straighten your right leg out. We're going to work the hips a little bit. You're going to raise your right leg up no higher than the stabilizing leg. And back down. We're going to do 10 of these. If this becomes easy, you can always add an ankle weight or a resistance band to make the intensity a little bit higher. But just to demonstrate the movement today, I'm just doing without any weight. You never want to go fast. You don't want momentum to be the thing that's moving you through your exercise today. Instead, going slow and controlled with a nice pause at the top and at the bottom. Good. Bend your right knee and straighten your left leg out. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So raise up just to be in line with that stabilizing bent leg. And we're focused on slow and controlled. When you go fast, momentum works to help move your leg. And you're getting a little bit less benefit for the muscle. We want to make sure we lower it slowly. That's a different activation of the muscle. It's called eccentric movement. And we want to be able to focus on both the concentric as we raise and the eccentric as we lower. One more here and down. Good. And bring your knees in. Just roll them out side to side a little bit. All right. And next, I'm going to have you roll onto your side. You can support your head with your hand and have your other hand in front of you for support. Bend your bottom knee, and the top leg is going to be straight out. We're going to do a similar movement, raising the leg up, but this time it's sideways. A key thing here is to make sure you can see my toes are pointed forward. If you roll back like this to get a bigger movement, we are actually losing the focus on the side of the hip there. So. Make sure those toes point forward and you're only raising up. You should only be able to go to here if you're staying in good form. Also, letting your hips fall back, you'll start to lose control there as well. So we're just doing 10 on this side again. You can always add some resistance to make this a little bit harder. However, I find that the side of the hip is often weak in a lot of people. So you may not need it. Good. All right, that's 10. On to our bellies. We're going to add a plank here. And I'm going to modify it on the knees. 
to make it a little bit easier. So you want the shoulders, hips, and knees in a nice straight line. Pull the belly button into your spine to provide some stability. And your shoulders should be right over your wrists. And we're just going to hold here. If that's too easy, you can always go up onto your toes. Or if you have wrist issues, you can modify by coming down onto your elbows. But the modification I'm going to stick with today is on the knees. It makes it a little bit easier for your core. All right, go ahead and lower down. We're going to rest and do that one more time. So just catch your breath here. And when you're ready, come back up into that modified plank position. The nice thing about this being a video is that if you need a longer rest, you can always pause it. Take whatever restoration you need so that you can come back and perform the next exercise. So again, we're just doing this modified position here, try not to let your belly sink or to arch your back. I'm going to be in a nice straight line, pulling that belly button into the spine. Shoulders over wrists, nice and stable here. And breathe, always breathing, never holding our breath. And hold. Good, and lower yourself back down. Catch your breath here, and then we'll move on to the next one. Again, pause the video if you need more of a recovery time. We're going to come back up into a very similar position. Okay, so knees bent, your shoulders are over your wrists, and we're going to do push-ups in this manner here. So we're going to lower our upper body down and back up. Okay? So bending at the elbows and then pushing back up again. And this is the modified version. You can always do straight leg. Makes it harder. That's five. You can also do arms wide. So let's do the second five. Arms nice and wide here. My hands come off my mat to do that. And five here. Two, three, four, and five. Good. And lower yourself down. We're going to do the opposite leg lift that we didn't do on the other side. You can continue to roll. And face away from me. I'm going to turn so that you can still see. So arms supporting your head. Your other hand is in front of you providing some support in front and your bottom knee is bent. Your top leg is kind of hovering at hip height, maybe a little bit lower. Toes point forward so you can get a good feel of if you're in good alignment because remember if your toes point up to the ceiling and your hip starts rocking back, you're losing your form, and we're not going to act activate the muscle that we want. Okay, so we're just going to do straight up and down here. Remember, we're going for slow and controlled. And if you go too high and that hip comes out back, your toe goes up, you're not using the side of the hip there. So if you're doing it right, you actually can't go as high. So just like this. Squeeze at the top there. Squeeze. Squeeze. Good. You got two left. One more. And down. Good. Go ahead. Back onto your back. And let's stretch it out. Make sure you're breathing. We're going to finish with a roll up here. So what we're going to do, keep your feet about hip width apart. Your arms are above you, shoulder width apart. We're just going to peel 
up off the mat, and bend forward, little stretch there. And then lower yourself back down. This is a move I'm borrowing from Pilates called the roll up. Activates the core as you come up here, and you get a nice stretch in the back and in the back of the legs as you pull forward and lower yourself back down. Now this is a difficult move. If you can't get the whole way up, you can get a bend in your knees to give you a little bit more of that help. Stretch, pull your belly button in as you come forward and lower back down. So feel free to modify with that bent knee to get up from here if you need to and then stretch out as much as you can. If you've got real tight hamstrings, you're probably still going to get a little bit of bend in the knee and that's okay because we want you to do it the right way and modify as you need to use the muscles in the proper manner and bending your knee allows you to do so. So nice and slow, peel up and fold forward, stretch, pull that belly button into the spine and lower back. One more here. Stretch forward and lower down. Nicely done. Go ahead and come back up into sitting. We're going to do one stretch sitting here because the back of the hamstrings is always pretty tight. So if your hips are comfortable with it, you can bring one leg out to the side and just stretch your other leg out in front of you. So I'm doing right leg first here. What you want to do is straighten out this knee on the right side. And I'm bending my toes to get a little stretch in the back of the calf as well. This might be enough for you. If you don't get in this position often, this just might be enough of a stretch. If not, you can sit up nice and tall and fold forward a little bit. That's going to put a little bit more pull on the hamstrings. And I want you to avoid this where you hunch because that curve in your low back actually takes the pressure back off the hamstrings where we want to stretch them. So up nice and tall, just a little bit bend. And we're just going to hold. So you should feel this in the back of the thigh, the back of the knee. And if you've got your knees or your toes up, you're going to feel it in the back of the calf as well. We're just going to breathe and hold here. Never to pain with stretching. Always just a little bit of stretch discomfort and that's all. Good. And now let's switch sides. So bring the right knee in, stretch the left leg out. Again, sit up nice and tall. Straighten the leg out as much as you can. And again, that might be it. That might be the end of the stretch for you. You're also welcome to sit on a block or a pillow, something that raises you up a little bit. Um, if just getting into this position is enough of a stretch. I'm going to flex my toes towards my nose to get a little in the calf. Sit up nice and tall and just fold forward a little bit to get that pull in the back of the thigh and a little bit in the back of the calf. You don't want that knee to pop up. If the knee is popping up, it means it's too much. And you want to sit up tall instead. So we're just going to hold here for a few breaths. You should just feel that stretch. Good. And come up tall. All right. Thanks for joining me on a little mat workout today. Um, again, you can always perform this on the bed if getting onto the floor isn't doable for you. Thanks for joining and we hope to see you at another one of our sessions.